Hi everyone and welcome to this quick Godot tutorial where we're going to see a few basic tips for using c -sharp in Godot. I hope this video will help you in your exploration of Godot and, of course, if you think that I forgot a crucial tip, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below with your own Godot c -sharp tricks. The first and most essential difference between Godot's scripting in GDScript and in c -sharp is that, even if the APIs are very similar, GDScript uses snake case, while c -sharp uses Pascal case. This is due to common programming conventions, for which languages a la Python like GDScript use snake case, and languages from the C family use Pascal case. So when you see a GDScript function or property, to get its equivalent in c -sharp, your best bet is simply to remove the underscores and put uppercase at the beginning of each word. But there were also a few functions that the Godot team decided to turn into properties, so usually it's better to actually look at this page that sums up all the major differences between the GDScript and c -sharp Godot APIs, and gives you a lot of interesting tips and hints on various properties or methods. All this is particularly important when you look at the official docs online, and the API reference, because for now, this API reference is only available in GDScript, so you need to know how to convert those to c -sharp for your c -sharp projects. And by the way, you should also be very careful when you watch some official tutorials in the Godot docs, and make sure that you're actually using the c -sharp version if there is one. Another big difference is that GDScript is meant to be an easy-to-learn scripting language, like Python, and as such, it doesn't have strong typing. When you create a variable, it's the value that you give it, or sometimes an extra annotation, that determines its type. c -sharp, on the other hand, is what we call a strongly typed language, meaning that you need to specify the type of your variables when you declare them. In a lot of cases, this might also force you to explicitly cast a type to another, so that Godot knows what exact object to retrieve, which you can do with normal casting using parentheses or using the as keyword. Usually, the as keyword is better when you think that the cast might fail, because it will return null instead of simply crashing if the value could not be converted. Also, some common methods of the Godot API, like getNode, can be used with generic types, so in that case, you put the expected return type between wedges, and it's kind of a wrapper around the basic casting or the as keyword. And as a little bonus, if you want to try and cast a variable, and only proceed if the cast succeeded, you can also use c -sharp's basic is pattern matching feature, where you start with an if check, and if it succeeds, you assign the converted version of your variable to a new variable available inside the if branch. Note that you can of course still rely on the var keyword to use implicit types if you prefer. So a super cool feature of Godot, which we actually discussed in the last tutorial of the series on FSMs, is the concept of signals, which are a bit like events. Those signals can be connected to callback functions in one or more scripts, and you can either link them manually in the editor while preparing your game, or create them dynamically via code at runtime. When you do it in GDScript, and also when you use c -sharp with Godot 3, you can attach a callback to a signal dynamically by using connect, and then passing in the callback object and function. But in Godot 4, c -sharp relies on a more c -sharp -y solution, which is to add or remove callbacks with the plus equal and minus equal syntax. That's a common way to subscribe to or unsubscribe from events in c -sharp. And honestly, I think it's cool that Godot took this approach, but just remember that this time you can't just translate it from GDScript directly. Whenever you want to show some variable in the inspector of your node, or you want to give it a new custom signal, you need to make sure that you give your object the export or signal c -sharp attribute. And then, super important, you need to actually rebuild the project for these changes to take effect, and the inputs to really show in the inspector. That's because c -sharp is a compiled language, 
so contrary to JDScript, it doesn't immediately take your changes into account when you save your file. Now, the project is automatically rebuilt whenever you start your game. But to build it manually, while you're in the editor and developing your game, you can simply go to the bottom panel in the MS Build tab and then open the drop-down in the top left corner to click on Build Project. When it's done, you should see all your new exported properties or signals in the inspector. Alright, now let's be honest, at the time of making this video and with Godot 4.1, Godot's c -sharp support is really promising, but not quite there yet. And most notably, there is no autocomplete in the built-in code editor, which really complicates things when trying to program a game. That's why they actually officially recommend to turn to an external IDE and connect your project to it to benefit from your IDE's features. In my case, I'm using Visual Studio Code, which is free and open source. So to configure Godot to work with my external editor, I first need to make sure that I have the .NET SDK installed on my computer. You can get the one matching your OS and machine specifications on the official website and just download and install it like any other tool. Then back in Godot, I simply need to go to the editor menu at the top and the editor settings menu inside. If I scroll down to the .NET section in the sidebar, I can then set my external ID application over here to be Visual Studio Code. And now, whenever I double-click on a script in my project, you see that it gets opened in VS Code directly, which is pretty cool. To actually have some cool highlighting and get autocomplete, you have to make sure that you add the official c -sharp plugin from Microsoft to your Visual Studio Code plugins. And you can download it very easily just by tapping in c -sharp in the plugin search field and then clicking Install. However, if I try and write some new debug somewhere, you see that there is still no autocomplete. To enable it, the trick is to go to the VS Code settings panel, search for .NET related options and enable OmniSharp. Then I can just reload my window and that's it really. From that point on, whenever I start to type some function or viable name, I get autocomplete in my IDE. Now, if you get some weird red squiggles and VS Code is telling you that it's missing some base lib references, go back to Godot and make sure that you've built your project recently. Then when you come back to VS Code, the issues should be fixed. If they aren't, maybe you should try and install another version of the c -sharp plugin. By the way, you can actually take this one step further by also integrating Run and Debug from VS Code, but I'll let you look for some dedicated tutorials on the net for this, cause it's basically just about properly setting up your launch.json file. And on that note, here you go! Those were a few tips for going from JDScript to c -sharp in a basic Godot project and using c -sharp more efficiently when doing Godot games. Of course, as I said before, this is just a brief selection of common tips and there's actually an entire page that you should definitely have a look at if you want to get a bit more familiar with all Godot c -sharp API. But anyway, I hope that you liked this quick tutorial and that it helped you dive into Godot c -sharp programming if you're not too used to it yet. If you enjoyed it, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. And of course, don't hesitate to drop a comment with your own Godot c -sharp tricks down below or with other ideas of Godot concepts that you'd like to learn. As always, thanks a lot for watching and take care.